Welcome to City Week, ladies and gentlemen. I am your host, Alton West. Today, I will have a guest on talking about Big Brothers Big Sisters. So stay tuned for that interview coming up in just a moment. We voted. I voted. I voted. I voted. I voted. We, we voted. voted. Woo! Hey, I'm Barbie Watts with Downtown LaGrange Development Authority encouraging you to cast a vote and help us win a $100,000 grant for LaGrange's Dog Park. You can cast two votes a day at PetSafe.com or the Facebook page for PetSafe. Let's win this thing. I voted. I voted. I voted. We, we voted. voted. Yay, I voted. Welcome to City Week, ladies and gentlemen. Today I'm sitting down with the chairman for the Big Brothers Big Sisters of the satellite office for Big Brothers Big Sisters here in LaGrange area. And we're going to talk about that in just a moment. But I'm sitting down today with John Harrell. John, welcome to the show. Thank you, Alton. Well, John, um, we were talking before we came on the air, and I know that you and I have had an opportunity to work together with Big Brothers and Big Sisters, a great organization here in our community. But before we get started, I know that you are pretty much a native to the area here, West Point, LaGrange, Columbus. Tell us a little bit about John and, and what John's role is outside of Big Brothers Big Sisters, if you don't mind. Um, I am a native of LaGrange. Uh, lived here for four years, between 64 and 68. Uh, I grew up in Columbus, Georgia, just down the road. Mm -hmm. um, after college at Barry, um, came back to this area, worked for Interface for a while, um, changed careers, got another degree at LaGrange College, um, and entered the field of human services, social work. Okay, very good. And in LaGrange College, you mentioned, I, I understand that you're enrolled at LaGrange College now as well as a student, correct? I am. Oh. I am uh, I'm in the new master's program in philanthropy and development. Um, been there right at a year. We'll start back a summer immersion session next week. Okay, very good. And you also, um, you're a part of, of the faculty for Twin Cedars Youth uh, Services. Talk a little bit about your role there, if you don't mind. I work with the Children's Advocacy Center of Troop County, where I'm assistant program coordinator and forensic interviewer. I manage a number of grants. And uh, I have another role with Twin Cedars, working with performance quality improvement. Mm -hmm and uh, look at maintaining objectives throughout the agency, um, just making sure that we remain within regulatory compliance and uh, set uh, realistic goals and measure those goals. Okay, well, very good. And then, uh, like I say, our, our paths across when we uh, are on, both sit on the board of Big Brothers Big Sisters. Um, and I want to kind of go back and talk a little bit about the history of Big Brothers Big Sisters, because I can remember uh, back in the day when there were some community organizers got started, and I, I think it kind of predates you, but you know, I know that you know some of the history of it. Talk a little bit about the history of Big Brothers Big Sisters and how it was formalized here in the LaGrange area. Um, I believe it was in 2003. Mm -hmm. uh, Michael Key had given a presentation at a local civic organization and afterwards was approached by Ted Beeson. Um, Ted had said that when he was in New York City, he was a big, and said that Big Brothers Big Sisters had really had an impact on him and on the child that he mentored. Mm -hmm. um, it was an old program, the over 100 years old, and thought it would be very appropriate for a, a mentoring program here. Mm -hmm. So uh, between Michael Key, um, Ricky Wolf, several other community movers and shakers. Uh -huh. um, they got the program off the ground, raised uh, the necessary two years operating cost, and actually opened the doors in 05. Absolutely. I can remember that was, uh, and we were housed at that time over on 4th Avenue uh, in the house uh, or in the church that Dash is occupying today. Uh, and we were there for a number of years and went through some, you know, ups and downs, had a couple of uh, uh, executive directors. Talk a little bit about some of the things that you saw as a board member when you came on and some of the things that we're transitioning to now. Again, just mainly kind of talking about that history. Uh, we don't want to start naming names. We named Ted Beeson because yeah. there's so many names that we yeah. could call. 
but just kind of talk about some of the other movers and shakers, uh, not only here locally, but also nation, uh, nationwide that are affiliated with Big Brothers Big Sisters. Um, well, the, like I said, the program is, and I'm going to have to reference my notes a bit okay, here. The program's fine. over 100 years old, mm -hmm. um, and it is the oldest mentoring program in, in, in the United States. But, uh, and you, may, you asked for some names that had been involved. Uh, Teddy Roosevelt was treasurer in 1923. Calvin Coolidge was a patron. Um, Franklin Roosevelt and his wife uh, both supported it. Um, Norman Rockwell actually did the logo for it. Um, so people nationwide, movers and shakers, have been involved with the program for, for 100 years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's an evidence-based program that's been shown to be particularly effective in reducing um, entry into the juvenile justice system by kids. Um, I believe they target children who have an older sibling that has been involved and of course the uh, the, the push with the program and what they try and measure is things like graduating from high school, mm -hmm. not being involved in juvenile justice system. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and although there's a lot of programs out there that do so in a group setting, being able to have an individual that's paired with you mm -hmm. um, means a lot to a child. Um, knowing that even if it is a small occasion, you know, when I was a big, I remember going to eat lunch with my little, and for a lot of people, walking into the lunchroom at a school is no particularly big deal, but he'd stand up and, wa and wave at me over here. Uh -huh. um, and he didn't want to sit with his friends then because uh, an yeah. adult had come to the school not to see an administrator or a teacher or anyone else, but I'd gone to see him. Right. He'd pick his tray up and would move down, to, would move down the table somewhere else. Right. Um, but he knew that I was there for, for him. Um, and, and, and it makes a huge difference with the kids here. Um, Absolutely. You, you mentioned the church that we were in, uh, the DASH office. Mm -hmm. and DASH was very gr generous in making some space for us for the, uh, for the first eight or nine years. Mm -hmm. um, but we were two very separate type programs. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. um, about a year ago, we l looked at moving to another location. That's right. And, and we're going to talk about that in a, in a moment too, Jim. But, but we are the a satellite resource office. Uh, we are under the umbrella of the greater Chattahoochee Valley area. Help people understand that dynamics and why it is that way. Yes, we are a satellite office of uh, the Big Brothers Big Sisters program, the Chattahoochee Valley located in Columbus. Mm -hmm. That program is actually one of four programs under the fiscal agent of the, the Family Center. Um, Big Brothers Big Sisters doesn't want to oversaturate any areas with too many programs. Okay. And they don't want too much competition between two, two Big Brothers Big Sisters programs. Mm -hmm. So as a general rule, a 50 mile radius, they want one program. Well, we're 49 miles from, from Columbus. Um, just right outside of it. <laughs> so just having that is almost a point of contention uh -huh. there. Um, but all of our books are kept separately. Um, we get ledgers on a monthly basis showing all the revenues that were generated here and all expenses here. Mm -hmm. We pay a nominal fee for uh, GNA and administration. Our book cap keeping ends up being cheaper since uh, it's through a larger organization. Uh -huh. So there's definitely some benefits. Right. But having, you know, ad administrative oversight from another city can at times be challenging. That's correct. Um, mm -hmm. When we look at um, potential donors locally and they see, you know, Chattahoochee Valley, right, kind of scratch their head, well, where's my money going? And regardless right. of how much we try and um, and let them know that their dollars here are going to stay here. Um, paranoia can make you put your wallet back in your pocket. We've um, seen that happen. We, we, we've, we've seen, seen that, that happen, and at times it's difficult, but mm -hmm. we try and reassure any potential donors um, that, 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 that the dollars are well managed by the office in Columbus, mm -hmm. and everything generated here 
will come back to us and be spent here on the matches and on, on costs that are associated with the LaGrange office. That's right. And you're talking about donations and, and, and I'm going to kind of shift gears just a little bit talking right. about fundraising. A couple of years ago we had the oyster roast that was held out at Highland Park uh, out off of Country Club Road. A big successful event. Uh, tickets were 100 bucks. all that money. Talk a little bit about that, and I know that you and I both know those funds stayed right here locally in our community. Talk about that for us, John. Um, well, we had an oyster roast. I believe we had one four years in a row. I think you're correct. Mm -hmm. um, the first was, um, was at, I believe, at different people's houses, mm -hmm. and that was prior to my involvement. Right. Uh, the first one I was involved in was at Highland Park, which is a wonderful setting, an outdoor setting. Um, it was, we had a band in that pavilion, there was good music, um, oysters, oysters and beer in the summer. It went over well. Yeah. Um, the last one we had, I believe, um, we had a little bit of rain, <laughs> we but, but we, we weathered the weather, uh -huh. pushed on through, and did reasonably well. Um, and I think we had good momentum. The recession, along with a loss of a federal funding stream that flowed through Columbus to us, mm -hmm. really put a dent in us. Mm -hmm. And it was difficult to maintain the staff that we had, which was a full-time employee and a part-time employee. Mm -hmm. um, we ended up cutting back to a full-time and then later cutting back to a, a single half-time person. Um, that caused f further personnel problems because regardless of what people say, they'd really like a full-time job. And we rolled through several part-time individuals before um, we got included in the City of LaGrange budget, mm -hmm. which helped a lot. Um, mm -hmm. It's not a tremendous amount, but it gives us a stable foundation to grow on. A little bit better than a year ago, met with some individuals from a, a small foundation from another town. Um, discussed the program and the potential funding, and we were awarded $30,000 by uh, a foundation that's outside of this immediate area, but saw the need and the effectiveness of a mentoring program, mm -hmm. particularly one that had a good history like Big Brothers Big Sisters. We've reapproached this same foundation in hopes of some additional monies. Um, but we would like to bring another fundraiser back here and look at some more local funding for such a program. Absolutely. I tell you what, John, and this is a great transitioning point here. I'm going to take a quick commercial break. Okay. I'm going to come back. I'm going to talk a little bit more about some of the fundraising events that we have planned and also how individuals that might be watching today may be wanting to know more about how they can become a big. So we're going to come back from a com commercial break, and we're going to talk about that in just a moment, if you don't mind, okay? Wonderful, thank All you. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, stay tuned. We'll be right back for more City Week in just a moment. www.petsafe.net and vote for LaGrange, Georgia in the Bark for Your Park contest? And I can vote every day on Facebook, too? I'll vote right now. Hey, what's all the ruckus? Penny wants a dog park, and we can give her one. You can vote every day, twice a day, on the PetSafe website and the PetSafe Facebook page. Hand me that thingamajig and I'll vote now, too. Woohoo, 
Welcome back City Week, ladies and gentlemen. Today we're sitting down with the chairman of the Satellite Resource Office of Big Brothers Big Sisters, John Harrell, and we were left off talking about funding opportunities. And John, you were telling us that um, we were able to reach out to a, a foundation and we were successful in accessing about $30,000 in funding to fund our operation. Talk a little bit more about that, if you don't mind. Um, through a local contact, um, I was actually approached by this foundation, which wishes to remain anonymous. Mm -hmm. um, I met with, um, with the chair of their board and spoke about the program, and a few days later was asked if I would submit a proposal and a budget and other required documents did. And then, um, and this was this was less than a year ago actually okay. um, did and just a, a few months later um, got a call from them and, and we were awarded those dollars that uh, came in two fifteen thousand dollar checks we Very were good. thrilled with that that was new life in the program that coupled with um, a new program coordinator locally that's right that where we went from a half-time position to a full-time position so we now have a full-time uh, employee that that coordinates all of the matches we had uh, her boss in Columbus the um, director of Big Brothers Big Sisters of Chattahoochee Valley mm -hmm. is new and the executive director of the Family Center is new. That's so right. we are new from our location all the way up through the executive director of our fiscal agent. Absolutely. Go ahead and mention her name, John, if you don't mind. Kelly, Kelly Mitchell. Kelly, Kelly Mitchell. Mitchell has been with us now for uh -huh. just a few months. She's local, which means a lot. That's right. Um, she's got experience in marketing. Um, she's, been, uh, she's, she's been invaluable in pushing the program forward. We have nearly tripled the number of matches that we have since her coming on. Mm -hmm. um, we have a long line, a long list of littles waiting for mentors, our bigs. That's right. Um, but n new people are signing up every day. We've got a, and, and if anybody would like to mentor a child mm -hmm. or would like more information, they'd be able to give Kelly a call. Um, but it is, it's a wonderful experience. A minute ago I mentioned um, Ted Beeson was a big and although we are targeting the littles and hopefully trying to help them out, I think he would let everyone know that he gained a lot from mentoring a child as well. Absolutely. You know, I think both you and I both are bigs as well. Yes. And I, it's, it's, like I said, it's a two-way street. It, it's it a give is, and take. Uh, you learn from the child, the child learns from you, so it's just helping to strengthen our community, help strengthen and, and pour into the life of a child uh, that you may not necessarily see the rewards just immediately, but you see them down the road, and that's what we, that's the whole goal. Let's see, uh, John, you were mentioning, if someone was watching and they wanted to become a big, what are some of the, the requirements for a person to become a big? Um, they'll do a criminal background check. Uh, mm -hmm. Kelly will come out and look at your house because okay. again, this uh, the bigs and their littles can meet in, in a wide variety of settings. And mm -hmm. that's one of the things that makes this so unique. Um, a child doesn't have to go to a physical location f for being mentored. Their big could pick them up and they could do, you know, they could do breakfast on Saturday mornings at McDonald's. Mm -hmm. They can go to football games. They can go to movies. There's so many things that they can do um, outside of a traditional setting. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, after the background check, after the inspection and a few questions, um, she, she will match you up with an appropriate little. They're same-sex uh, matches. Um, we have a community-based program and are expanding our school-based program now also. Mm -hmm. the, the dollars that you mentioned from the foundation, we are seeking additional dollars so that we'll be able to bring someone else on board and, and and really stabilize our school program as well as our community-based programs. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and you know, talking about the school-based program, John, you mentioned a moment ago that we have a new office location. And, and I think it's so wonderful and unique that we're in, in, in a school and we're housed with other organizations. Speak about that if you don't mind. Well, uh, again, when we were at the Dash office on 4th Avenue, it was wonderful. It was great to have the space, and it was great for Dash to be able to step forward to allocate that space. But they're radically different agencies with radically different purposes. Mm -hmm. 
when we thought we were we needed to move someone else we looked throughout LaGrange we explored a lot of options but when we looked at the old Cannon Street School and we saw that Boys and Girls Club was housed there the potential for CAFE Community Action for Improvement as well as uh, Alpha Multipurpose it really looked like a good fit so now we have a uh, office space there, some meeting space there, our boardroom there, uh, and those other three programs that also can work with children in subcapacity makes a huge difference. If uh, Bart McFadden, the director of Boys and Girls Club, thought that a child that uh, regularly came to his program needed a mentor, all they had to do was walk down the hall. Mm -hmm. um, and although you can always reach out uh, I think it helps us if we're, we're reminded passing somebody in the hall and he can say, well Kelly that's right. I've got a boy here that really could benefit from a mentor. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So like programs operating together in an inherent partnership. Absolutely. And you know, it's just, it has been a great repurposing of that uh, building, that school, uh, to have those four organizations there that have a common goals and objectives, and that is to, to, to touch and impact the lives of our youth. Uh, to help them make a difference in the life uh, of our community or whatever community they, they end up ultimately landing in. Um, so it seems that Big Brothers Big Sisters, we've kind of weathered the storm. We've gotten ourselves back on a good foundation, solid footing. We got Kelly Mitchell there as our office manager. We have great board members. But I know that there may be somebody that may say, well, I want to get involved. I may not necessarily want to be a big. Is there a way that they can, you know, contribute, you know, resources, uh, make donations? How can they do that, John? The first step would be to call Kelly Mitchell. Mm -hmm. um, and we appreciate support in any capacity. Mm -hmm. um, primarily bigs, you know, step up to the plate and uh -huh. mentor a child. If you really want to make a difference in your community, and we want to make a long-lasting difference in our community, mm -hmm. The adults can have talks, we can make changes on our level, but unless we're willing to actively pass that baton to the kids, mm -hmm. that change is just going to last as long as we're the leaders. Mm -hmm. We're going to get old one day. Kids tell me I am already. <laughs> and, and, and the kids running around now are going to run things. That's right. And we've got to pass on the, the, the tools that they'll need to run the community and to be an asset to our community. Absolutely. And mentoring a child one on one is the most effective way to do that. Absolutely. You're talking about running around, John, and, and, and passing that baton. I know that we have some fundraising events coming up where people can get an opportunity to run around oh, and God. have great fun. Uh, I think this is what our third year of the annual dodgeball contest, I mean, the dodgeball event fundraising. Well, we've, we, we had one this past December, uh -huh. um, and dodgeball is something that I think we all remember doing with the big red <laughs> bouncy balls. Yes, we do. Jim, <laughs> when you wore, you know, socks that came up to here and had two stripes on them. That's right. Taking us back there. <laughs> and, and, and nobody had to be particularly talented. That's right. <laughs> well, we had a dodgeball tournament in December and had about 50 people that participated. Um, the Grange Academy let us use their gym and they've they've offered it again uh -huh. um, but that one tournament I got a lot of feedback saying when are you going to do it again when are you going to do it again Very good. so we have scheduled um, three more games that will wrap up this summer the last one will be August 10th I think that's the first day of school uh -huh. but these are all in the evening from 5 to 8 okay. um, anybody's welcome um, and, and it won't be a whole lot different from what you played for it when you were in the fourth or fifth grade. Uh -huh. um, teams of teams of ten, six on the court at a time, and you're throwing dodge, you're throwing the dodgeballs at each other. Um, with each one of these tournaments, you get a T-shirt, you get uh, you get sweatbands as well, so <laughs> we can so so we can fully embrace oh the seventies. <laughs> okay. uh, you get sweatbands and you get a meal. So for 10 bucks, you get to play dodgeball, you get to, you know, ha have a ball with that. Uh, you get your t-shirt, and in December we did chili. Mm -hmm. We're looking at barbecue one of these nights, hopefully Chick-fil-A one night, and we're still looking for a sponsor for the third night. Okay. So, you mm -hmm. know, a Chick-fil-A sandwich, dodgeball, and a t-shirt is a pretty good deal for pretty 10 good. bucks. There so, you go. But to start off with, give Kelly Mitchell a call, ask her. Um, We've got an online registration form, so regist 
registering for the tournament would be simple. Okay. okay. And although the, the, the ten dollars ahead will hopefully help us to be able to break even fiscally with this, mm -hmm. the main purpose is to recruit bigs. We recruited several bigs in our December tournament. Okay. Um, again, we need mentors more than anything else. Absolutely. Um, We've gotten some funding, but we want to be able to bring our number of bigs back up, which will justify asking for additional funding and having the, the, the amount of services provided be able to equate with, with our funding increase makes a huge difference. Absolutely. And that's $10 per person? $10 a person. Team of eight, ten? Team, yeah, a team. And, and if you only have a couple, mm -hmm. You know, come call on and come on. We'll pair you up with somebody. We had several singles that came out in December, okay. and we put them on a team, and they had every bit as much fun. I bet they did. Um, and, you know, when we, you were talking about going back to those days with this tube sock, tube socks way up. See, back when we had <laughs> real right. style that's and right. gym shorts that's were right. wonderful. That's right. Now, as we get ready to close out, uh, John, if you don't mind, I know we mentioned Kelly's number so we can contact her. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and give uh, the listening audience her contact number, if you don't mind. 706-298-2434, and that's Kelly Mitchell. She is the program coordinator for the LaGrange Satellite Office of Big Brothers Big Sisters. Right. She's done a phenomenal job. Absolutely has. Absolutely. And John, we want to thank you for kind of taking the helm too when we were going through some rocky times there, kind of helping to guide the ship along the course there. I'm glad that we have Kelly now back with us and, and with us. And, and I think, you know, Big Brothers and Big Sisters moving in the right direction. So we just want to say thank you for all that you've done and for Kelly and all the other board members. I want to start naming names again cool. because I think we've all been, been a great team effort we, we've had some we've had board members here dig their heels in um, folks like you that uh, work with the city also in helping us move from the old office into the Cannon Street y'all were instrumental in get doing that our new mayor has really been helpful Absolutely. We, we've had a lot of people step up to the plate quickly Absolutely. Um, we need more than anything more bigs more mentors for the kids in in Troop County well very good and I know that we're gonna get them and by all means, ladies and gentlemen, come out for the dodgeball. That's August, I mean, July. July 27th, July 27th, August 3rd, and August 10th from 5 to 8. Those are all three Monday evenings. Um, and if you've got any questions about that, give Kelly a call. And uh, and if, if if you need to, you're welcome to give me a call. Can I yeah, give, give means, out give my number? My number is 706-302-7546. Sure. All right. Well, John, thank you very much for being on the show today. Thank you. Thank you so much. Alan. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, stay tuned for more City Week in just a moment. I voted. I voted. My dad voted. I voted. Our mama voted. I voted. Have you voted? I'm Jim Thornton, Mayor of LaGrange, and I'd like to encourage you to vote for the Pet Safe Dog Park Grant. You can vote twice a day once at PetSafe.net and once on PetSafe's Facebook page. Let's win this, LaGrange. Please vote! I voted. Have you voted? I voted. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining City Week this week. My guests have been the chairman of the Satellite Resource Office for Big Brothers Big Sisters, John Harrell. As he talked about the transition that the Big Brothers Big Sisters organizations have made here in our community, also the positive impact. And for those of you that are watching that would like to become a big, give Kelly Mitchell a call. I'm sure she would be glad to sign you up. Also, don't forget the dodgeball coming up. Come on out and support us. It's for a very worthwhile cause. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope that you've enjoyed this interview. And as always, I want to invite you back for more of City Week. What is it, girl? <coughs> okay, let's go tell her right now. Mom, Mom, can you vote for a pet safe dog park? Well, sure I can. How do I vote? <coughs> Thanks, Penny. I'll vote right now. Hey, what's all the ruckus? Penny wants a dog park, and we can give her one. You can vote every day, twice a day, on the Pet Safe website and the Pet Safe Facebook page. Hand me that thingamajig, and I'll vote now, too. <coughs> Woo, doggy.